Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here back from our video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the brand new DJI Mavic Air 2 controller. This is something that I've done with pretty much all of my other drones and a lot of people find these interesting so I figured I would do it with the newer version of the Mavic controller here because it's different than the other ones. There are some similarities but there are things that are different as well so I'm going to be taking a deep dive and showing you everything you need to know about this controller as well as for those who are beginners to flying drones I'll be showing you a little bit of a getting up and going flight guide for the Mavic Air 2 and how to fly it so in this video I'll be touching on that so if you're somebody who's not necessarily new to drones then I highly suggest watching some of my other videos up there if you get bored of this video but otherwise stay tuned and let's jump right into showing you how to use this controller alrighty so here we go this is the new controller controller for the Mavic Air 2. I personally really like this design of the controller just because it is super solid and with its larger build it fits better in my hands. I don't know about others but I just have never really dug the other design that the Mavic Mini, the Mavic Pro Platinum, the Mavic 2 Pro and all other Mavic series drones have been stuck with for the last couple of years. I welcome this design and not only because it is a bigger body but also because of where your phone goes. Now your phone goes up here. And one thing to mention is that if you are flying this for the first time, you will need a phone because you do have to register the drone with the DJI app. And if you don't have a phone, then you could use a tablet or something else. But you do need a device to plug into the controller in order to connect to the drone and register it. Getting this connected to your phone is as simple as pulling out this left side of the cable and then tucking it over to the side and throwing your phone up here. You may notice that the cable I've got on here currently is a lightning cable. And don't worry if you have another phone that isn't an iPhone that doesn't have a lightning plug on the bottom, then DJI has you covered. As in the box, it comes with two other cables. It's got USB-C to micro USB and USB-C to USB-C. So if you have either of those on your phone, then you are all set. And yes, I did say USB-C. An awesome thing about this controller is that it is now powered by USB-C. So if you unplug this, you'll see that is a USB-C plug right there. And then on the bottom of the controller, it's got a USB-C port for charging. This is spring loaded, so you can pull it up and it is definitely large enough to fit even the largest of smartphones. So also one last thing to mention about when you're putting your phone in here is that DJI even thought of everything. They even have this little divot here in the rubber which allows for your volume buttons that are likely on the left side of your phone which will be placed right here to not be pressed while it is in the controller. Now that is if you've got a bare phone and you don't have a case on but in my case I usually take off the case anyways so that means that it solidly avoids touching the volume buttons which I was pretty worried about at first but they even thought of that and got the rubber out of there. So that is where your phone goes on this new controller. To get the controller on all you got to do is press once, press twice and hold. You'll hear the noise and it will power on. Once it's powered on it'll start blinking like this until it connects to the drone. So if I go power on the drone right now you'll see now that the drone is on and connected the lights stop flashing and they stay solid white. So that is your one way of knowing directly on the controller if it is connected to your drone or not. Right above that is the mode selection. So there are three different flight modes with the Mavic Air 2 and those specifically are tripod mode which slows down all the movement of the the drone so then you can get some super cinematic shots and move really slowly and you can do that obviously in normal mode which is just completely normal flying you can do that yourself but tripod mode just tends to take out some of the jerking movement that you may get sometimes when you're manually doing it no matter how steady you are you will more than likely usually get some jitter in the footage if you're just manually moving your drone in normal mode but tripod mode avoids that normal mode is just what it sounds like it's got normal flight mode and doesn't totally drain your battery because it limits your top speed so then it's not the fastest speed but it is at a adequate speed that you wouldn't necessarily need to go much faster unless you're flying in wind or some environment where you need to keep up with a moving vehicle or something like that where you want to fly faster and in that case you would want to go into sports mode. Sports mode disables the sensors so obstacle avoidance stops and it allows you to go at top speed which top speed for this drone is 42.5 miles per hour 
which is just absolutely crazy for the size of this drone. So I love that it can hit that top speed. And say you've been flying into the top speed in the sports mode after a little bit and you didn't realize how far away you were getting from yourself and you don't know where your drone is. Well, DJI's got you. With this return to home button, all you gotta do is press it and hold and the drone will begin returning to home, which I'll show in just a little bit. But it's super easy to get your drone home and also this button serves a second purpose. If you are using an autonomous flight mode, you have got an emergency stop button. If you just press this once, it'll completely stop whatever you're doing and it will stop the autonomous flight mode. Up here on the top left, you've got a function button, which this is reprogrammable to three different settings currently. I'm hoping DJI adds more functionality to this button in the future, but right now it's got a short press and a long press. For me right now, I've got it set to a short press, turns on and off the auxiliary light on the bottom, and then a longer press goes and flips the camera up from parallel to the ground to straight down. So that just does that back and forth if I long press and that's the default of that button. On the opposite side, you have got a camera type flip button. And what I mean by that is this will allow you to flip between your camera shutter so you can take photos and your video mode so you can take video. And the reason they did that is because this time around, there are not two separate buttons for recording and photos, which I personally really like. So this allows you to switch between them really easily with the press of your thumb. You can start taking a video or cut the shutter if you are wanting to take a photo. So it depends on the scenario you're in. And then on the opposite side, you've got a gimbal wheel. This gimbal wheel right here controls exactly what it has in the name, and that is it allows you to control the gimbal movement up and down. So when you're moving around, you don't have to just go and long press this this to move up and down you've got way more movement than that and you do that simply by just moving this up and down and just a quick mention here that the gimbal wheel here on the back is not the only way to move your gimbal something that i didn't even know until recently is that if you long press on your phone app it will bring up the controls for the gimbal and this allows you to move your gimbal around pretty much anywhere so this allows you to even move to the side and it will lock into place too so this is really awesome if you are somebody who wants to move your gimbal around. It lets you go 80 degrees left and right on the gimbal. As you can see, there I am. And you can move up and down as well. As far as everything else goes on the controller, there are the removable joysticks. So I didn't show putting these on, but these do just come out of this bottom here. It just presses in when you're ready to put the controller away and comes out just easily like that righty tidy and lefty loosey as far as putting these on go and you don't have to tighten these down a ton all you got to do is just finger tight and you are all set and so with all that being said now that we've taken a look at the controller itself let's get this up into the air so we can take a closer look at how to use the DJI Fly app. So to take off, there are two ways to do this. The most easiest way to do this if you are a beginner is to use the button on the app directly. All you gotta do is tap the take off button and then press and hold the center button on your screen. And once you let go, the drone's motors will start up and it will go to about a three foot hovering distance from the ground. From there, you just move up your left stick and you will see the drone moves up. To come down, you move your left stick down to spin to the left, you move the left stick to the left, and to spin to the right, you move the left stick to the right. Your forwards, backwards, and left and right movements are on your right stick. So in my opinion, this is the easiest flight mode just because you gotta remember that this controls your directions. And then the left one just controls your up-down movement and your left and right. Now the other way to take off is quote unquote a little bit more advanced and is the way that I always take off, but it's really not that difficult compared to the app version. And in my opinion, I find this way way easier to do because this way all you gotta do is press your sticks either into the center or to the outsides. And what this does is it initiates what is called CSC. And the CSC command starts and emergency stops your propellers depending on the scenario. So with that being said, this is the way that I take off. So you move your sticks to the center, turns on the propellers, and then all you gotta do is give it some upward lift by pressing up on the left stick. And once you've done that, the drone will go up into the air and you are ready to fly. This method is far quicker to get up into the air and flying, which is why I like to use it because it just makes for an easier flight experience when you are flying and when you wanna get up and going and get a shot. Now that we're in the air, 
As I was mentioning already, to move around, you just go and use your left stick and that will give you some forward movement. I'm gonna to wanna to make sure to get some lifts so then I can avoid these power lines over here. But because I am up here, all I gotta do is move over and let's say I wanna get some shots of these cows. So because I am in video mode right now, which you can tell by looking over here on the right side. If it is red, then that means you are in video mode. And if it is white, then that means you are in photo mode. In this case, I do wanna take a video, so I'm in video mode now. And a cool thing about the Mavic Air 2 is that it does have eight gigabytes of internal storage. So that means you don't have to have an SD card into your drone. It will automatically have eight gigabytes of internal storage on it if you choose to use that. In my case, I do have an external card, a micro SD card that is put into the drone. So I have it set to not use the internal storage right now. But if you don't have a SD card that you wanna put in your drone or you forgot it or it's full, and you want to switch into internal memory mode, then all you gotta do is go to settings, go to camera, and then at the bottom of this page, right here under storage location, you can change between internal storage or SD card storage. So as you can see, I do have 120 gig SD card in the drone. This supports up to 256 gigabytes, so you could have even larger than that, but you could switch to the internal storage and that will go and have around eight gigabytes of internal storage. But with that being said, let's record. To see what format you are recording in, all you gotta do is click on the little film strip that is above the record button. And here you get all of your options for recording. For me, I always record in 30 frames per second just because that's what I prefer. Prefer. And once you're there, you can either press the button on the app itself to begin recording or press the button here on the back. So I'm going to press the button here on the back. It will begin recording and we can now start to move around. So I'm going to go and get a little bit closer to these cows just to show you. And again, the way that I'm moving this gimbal currently is with this gimbal wheel here on the back. Over time, you learn how to use this in conjunction with your controls, and that allows you to get some really dynamic shots as far as where your movement can go when you are flying your drone. And just to show you here up in the air, you can use this gimbal mode as well. So this allows you to move it around just by tapping on the screen. Again, this is a really cool feature that I wish I had known about sooner because this is just something that sometimes you may need to get a shot where you need to move your gimbal in an odd spot. So if you've moved around like this and you wanna get back to the center and you want your drone's gimbal to be centered again, the easiest way to get out of being moved to an odd location other than just long pressing and going back manually is to go and just draw a square on your screen as if you want to use a autonomous flight mode. So you do that and it centers back up your gimbal and you are all set again. Boom, there's a shot. I'm done with this shot. All you gotta do is press the stop button on the app or the shutter button here on the back of the controller and you are all set to go. As far as photos go, same deal. You can swap between the two modes with that button there. Frame up your shot that you wanna take a photo of. Get your drone framed up. Press the shutter button on the back of the controller or on the app itself and you have taken a photo. You can swap between the Mavic Air 2's 48 megapixel photo mode and regular photo mode by clicking on the rectangle above the shutter. And so this is the same as video. You just tap that and then you've got your different photo modes. Once I've got my photos and videos taken, what if you wanna go and review them quickly? If you wanna do that, you can go and click on this playback button, which will take you to a quick view of your aircraft's internal storage. Now this is everything that is on your drone's SD card and internal storage. But if you'd like to see only what the DJI app has, then you can click on the DJI Fly tab. And this will just purely show everything that's been downloaded and cached onto your phone. So if you ever have issues of your phone having a ton of cached videos and photos from the DJI Fly app, this is how to get to them and delete them. So you can just delete them from here by selecting them and then deleting if you wish. So that is how to review your images and videos. As far as everything else goes for flying the first time, this again is how you switch between your flight modes. So just showing you a quick representation of how this really does affect your flight. If I'm going over here, you will see this regular normal flight mode will allow me to get up to about 25, 26 miles an hour. If there's a gust of wind, it might get closer to 28, but it really doesn't let you go too much faster than that just to not allow you to drain your battery. But if you wanna go faster than that, you can swap into sport mode. Sport mode 
will full on kick the drone forward and it will start really pushing out some air. This way will allow you to get up to that 42 and a half mile per hour top speed. And in wind, you may even be able to go faster than that. Right now, I'm topping out at about 42.8 miles per hour, which is just slightly above the top speed, but still pretty cool. As far as the tripod mode goes, I'm gonna come over to this industrial park just to show you a interesting sight here. And what I'll do is swap over to tripod mode and you'll notice when I go and move my drone, it really slows down how much I can move left and right. It does the same as far as going up and down and moving forwards and backwards. So if you are in high winds or in a scenario where you've got a lot of foliage around you or something that could inhibit your flight at any point, I would not recommend being in tripod mode. This absolutely slows down any movement you make. So if you ever accidentally go and kick into this and you're like, why isn't my drone moving? Then just simply go back to normal mode and showing you here, this is the difference between normal mode going left and right and tripod mode going left and right. To use return to home, you can either press the button here on the app, which will begin return to home, or you can cause it to land right where it is, or you can use the return to home button here on the controller itself. And to do that, press and hold, and the drone will proceed to returning to home. So I would always recommend to have your RTH set to at least 140 or higher. This is dependent on the environment you're flying in, so definitely pay attention to that. But that is what I keep mine at. Not doing anything with my controller, the drone will land itself. So there you have it. There is the quick and dirty getting up and going with the Mavic Air 2. I hope this video was helpful as far as learning how to use this controller. It isn't as daunting as it may seem, I promise you. And the app is more daunting, honestly. So I will be hopping into looking more specifically at more of those app features in a future video, as well as getting into some of the autonomous flight modes that this has to offer. Obviously, I didn't really touch on any of those in this video. So if you do want to see that in a future video, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to see those, as well as requesting videos that you wanna see on this channel down in the comments below, because I'm constantly pulling video ideas from the comments. So if you have something that you have a burning question that you want answered, then make sure to leave those down in the comments below. But in the meantime, I hope to see you in future videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below, as well as subscribing once again, if you haven't done that yet, and turning on the bell to get notifications when I upload. Also, if you wanna see my last video, that should be up there and some random video should be down there. With that being said, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Peace.